My name is Cindy and welcome to Musicians for Freedom Arizona. And my name is Tom. We have a great program for you today. We hope you will enjoy this presentation as much as we do. Hello Thomas Jefferson. It's me, Ron Paul. I am so glad you are here because I really need your help. Ron, this is a dream. I can only give you advice. But Mr. Jefferson, you have to see our country today. We are fighting multiple wars. We have military presence in 130 of 190 countries worldwide. We have had a central bank for 100 years and it has driven our national debt up to 14 trillion dollars. The citizens and businesses lose more than one-fourth of their income to taxes, and we have to import most of the goods we consume because many of our jobs have moved overseas. Stop right there, Ron. I am glad this is a dream, because if this were reality, my head would have exploded because everything you say is very inconsistent with the government that I helped to establish. We have come a long way since your time, sir. The United States is the policeman of the world. We are monitoring every country's actions and exerting our power upon them when they do not conform to our ideals. I have seen enough of one war never to wish to see another. The less you use power, the greater it becomes. And the Patriot Act is a bill that was passed to protect the American people from terrorism. What is terrorism? I am not familiar with this term. Currently, there is no universally agreed, legally binding definition. Let me get this straight. You passed a bill that gives the government authority over terrorism, but there is no definition for terrorism? Do you realize the tyranny that can ensue if the wrong people were to come to power? Absolutely, Mr. Jefferson. The Patriot Act gives the government the authority to listen to our conversations, read our mail, and track our purchases. Then, if it determines we are behaving like a terrorist, it can invade our home and lock us in jail. What happened to the Fourth Amendment, protecting the people against unreasonable searches and seizures? When did you abolish the Bill of Rights? We still have the Bill of Rights, but many federal judges believe that the Bill of Rights does not apply directly to our generation. They say that you and the Founding Fathers could not foresee the unique circumstances that we encounter in our present lives and that you would write the Constitution differently if you were here today. Are you kidding me? That is exactly why we wrote the Constitution in the first place. After living in England in the 1700s and witnessing firsthand the oppression in France and the French Revolution, we all knew how our corrupt government thinks and acts. We wrote the Constitution to protect the people. My God, what happened? If you sacrifice liberty for security, you lose both. Mr. Jefferson, I wish you could run for president in 2012. From the sound of it, I don't think I would have a chance at being elected president in your society. You stopped the first central bank during your presidency, and Andrew Jackson stopped the second central bank. If I were president, I would bring an end to the third central bank. We call it the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve? When was it established? The Federal Reserve Act was enacted on December 23, 1930. Why, that is two days before Christmas. Was Congress still in session? The Federal Reserve was established in a very secretive, corrupt fashion. Anyway, the central bank manipulates the distribution of dollars in the economy and controls the interest rates that are applied on business loans. I do not like the sound of that. I have said before, a good government leaves men free to regulate their own pursuits of industry and improvement, and does not take from the mouth of labor the bread it has earned. The Federal Reserve is not exactly part of the government. They have no obligation to reveal the amount of money they are lending, or who they are lending to. There is no elected member of the Fed to represent the people. Most of the members have personal ties to Goldman Sachs. What is Goldman Sachs? It is an investment bank that makes money front running stocks, selling treasury bonds to the Fed, and buying insurance on toxic assets through an insurance company called AIG, which they knew would be backed by bailout money from their buddies at the Fed. What? The Fed doesn't buy treasury bonds directly from the treasury? And what is a bailout? 
the Fed pays a premium for the Treasury bonds it buys from Goldman Sachs. This is because Timothy Geiner is in charge of buying Treasury bonds for the Fed, and he has close ties to Goldman Sachs. During the recent financial meltdown, the government decided that some banks are too big to fail. It decided to give these banks hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars to help them. Good Lord! What does too big to fail mean? How big does it have to be? There is no definition. If the Fed thinks you are big enough, then you will get bailed out. Do you understand what this means? It will allow small banks to fail and end to bankruptcy and allow large banks to swallow them up. This is exactly what we wanted to avoid. And if the large banks know they will get the bailout, they will make crazy gambles in the future if there is no regulation. This is very dangerous. By the way, where did the government get the hundreds of billions of dollars for the bailout? Did the American people agree to let them raise taxes? No, we paid for it through inflation. After paying the interest on the national debt, the government does not have much money. So we print the rest of the money that we need. This devalues the dollar and translates to a tax because Americans will have to pay more for everything they buy in the future. But the government controls most of the mainstream media and the Department of Education, so the general public knows nothing about this. Please wake up from your dream so I don't have to hear any more of this. At least the American people can hold on to their gold and silver. Actually, the dollar is not backed by gold or silver anymore, and it was illegal for an American citizen to own gold from 1933 to 1974. Consequently, only about 4% of Americans own precious metals. We would be in deep trouble if the dollar were to fail. Paying for government programs through inflation and debt is a direct tax on the future generations. You cannot maintain this system forever. Your lenders will wise up and stop buying your debt. I once said, it is incumbent on every generation to pay its own debt as it goes. What can I do, Mr. Jefferson? You have to help me. Educate and inform the whole mass of the people. They are the only sure reliance for the preservation of liberty. Every generation needs a new revolution. Continue what you are doing. And please don't dream about me so much. This is a nightmare. Hey TJ. What's up? Ron Paul. It is good to see you again. How is our country doing? Well, we are still in the middle of a depression. Those boneheads at the Fed really amaze me. Just select a vice president that is good with guns and have him shoot the Secretary of Treasury. That is what I did. Yeah, but it is not that easy today. Most people think the idea of abolishing the Federal Reserve is too radical. Did you know our current Secretary of Treasury, Timothy Geithner, did not pay income taxes for five years prior to being appointed to the position? Now he leads the group that chases Americans around for their money kind of hypocritical. But nobody seems to care. Sounds like it. What is income tax? The 16th Amendment, ratified in 1913, allows Congress to levy a tax on income of every citizen and business. Really? Good Lord. And that is the same year that they established the Federal Reserve? Yes, quite a coincidence. We had some sneaky bankers back then. Anyway, we are in this depression. Housing prices are falling, unemployment is rising, we are in a debt crisis, and it is obvious the Fed has no clue what to do. Do you know what to do, Ron? I don't know how much power I would have in this manner if I were president, but I would push to legalize gold and silver money to compete with Federal Reserve notes, and I would propose a much more meager budget than Obama, cutting government programs like it was my job. Who is Obama? He has never dreamt of me. He is our president. I imagine he dreams about John Maynard Keynes, Franklin Roosevelt, and Karl Marx, instead of you, or the Founding Fathers. Oh, he is the one that likes to share the wealth. Well, I see how that is turning out for him. You cannot pry money from the hands of the rich. You just end up milking the middle class and handing the money to the wasteful government programs. How is your presidential campaign going? It's okay. 
The hardest part is getting the Republican nomination and fair media representation. In the last debate, I thought I kicked some major ass, but I was reported to have received 0% of the vote. But my internet following spoke otherwise. If I could somehow win the Republican nomination, I think the presidential race would be a landslide for me. Who were you up against in the Republican primary? Probably Mitt, Romney, Michelle Bachman, and Rick Perry. Mitt Romney is a shapeshifter, constantly changing his views based on what most Americans want. Michelle Bachman is like Sarah Palin, but slightly less retarded. Rick Perry is the chosen one by the Bilderbergs and the Fed. He would be unbeatable because he would raise one billion dollars in no time. Sarah Palin? You know, Paul Revere told me recently that she messed up a story about him at one of her pep rallies. I mean, she got the Paul Revere story totally wrong. Yeah, but she is retarded. Anyway, you have to help me TJ. Our country is heading to the same debt crisis that has already hit Greece, Portugal, Iceland, and Ireland. We will be overcome with debt to the point that we cannot even pay the interest to the central bank. If that happens, please do what Iceland did, and say, F the bank, we are not gonna pay it. Then, build some ships, move to another continent, and start your own government, based on personal liberties. That is what we did. TJ, you know there are no vacant continents left. We have to fix America. Even if you lose the Republican candidacy, your efforts will not be in vain. There is a revolution in America, and you are a part of it. Keep your head up, put the Fed's head on the stake for this crisis, put Obama's head on it. You know more about how to fix this than any other candidate. You are the right man for the job. A moment of epic proportion! Over 30 years in the making, the left despises them, although they share a lot of common ground. The right fears this because his influence is growing. Main Street Media tries to ignore what he has to say if it doesn't fit their corporate agenda. Yet he continues on with his message of personal freedom, non-aggression, following the Constitution, smaller government, free trade, and liberty. His supporters are knowledgeable, passionate, diverse, and growing. America needed him before, and he answered the call. Now, America needs him even more. Ron Paul for President 2012. The revolution continues. Well, I'm Congressman and Presidential Candidate Ron Paul. So good to meet you. Keep your mouth shut, you murderous monster. You have the blood of thousands upon your hands. An honest man who freed the slaves and saved the Union? Nothing could be further from the truth. What did I ever do to deserve this treatment? Maybe the fact that you started an unnecessary war that freed some slaves while enslaving everyone at the cost of over a million people ending up dead, wounded and missing. What do you mean by enslaving everyone? If you don't believe in secession, then you believe in slavery, for you are for enslaving people to a government that they want no part of. You freed the slaves, then enslaved them and everyone else to the government. Congratulations, you totalitarian slave master. But I had to start a war. No previous president had been put into the same predicament that I was in, with states leaving the Union. I had to stop them. Don't tell me your lies. James Buchanan, your predecessor in the White House, had allowed the first seven southern states to leave in peace. Although he did not believe they possessed the right of secession, he also did not believe that the federal government had the right to force a seceding state to stay in the Union. Why not? Because the Constitution is silent on the question of secession. And the states never delegated to the federal government any power to suppress secession. Therefore, secession remained a reserved right of the states. You ever read the Tenth Amendment? Yes, but I had to destroy the Tenth Amendment in order to save the Tenth Amendment. Same with the rest of the Constitution. That kind of stupid government doublethink is why George Orwell wrote the book 1984. If you destroy something, it is destroyed. 
The federal government is no longer the servant of the states, but their master. If the people had wanted you to become a dictator, they would have given you the power to do so. You are supposed to be the servant of the people, not their master. How could the people have given me the power in the constitution to become a dictator during an emergency? In the Roman Republic, a dictator was a person given sole power for a specific limited period in order to deal with an emergency. The founding fathers knew about this, but still decided to leave it out of the constitution. Therefore you don't even deserve to be called a dictator. But why then do historians rate me the highest? Because the historians are never asked to rank the presidents based on their adherence to the constitution which they swore to uphold or their commitment to liberty. Besides, the polls take for granted that there exists some objective and non-ideological way to rank the presidents, but there is no such thing. For example, what is good economic management? A socialist historian will say one thing, a capitalist historian another. And most historians are government worshippers. But I'm the great emancipator. I think I'm going to throw up. You should be called the great subjugator. I remember President Barack Obama talking about your empty label. I cannot swallow hold the view of Lincoln as the great emancipator. As a law professor and civil rights lawyer, and as an African American, I'm fully aware of his limited views on race. Anyone who actually reads the Emancipation Proclamation knows it was more a military document than a clarion call for justice. But without me, you would still have slavery. Tell me another one, Abe. Slavery was phased out in every other country in the world. It is rather unflattering to assume that Americans were so savage that they were the only people for whom a negotiated settlement of the slave issue was simply impossible. And it is unreasonable to suppose that the South could have long withstood the inevitable and overwhelming international moral pressure to which their isolated position would have exposed them. So how exactly would you have freed the slaves? The way the British Empire did. Buy the slaves and release them. How much would that cost compare to the enormous cost of fighting the war, not to mention the killing of 600,000 Americans? But if I had lost, then wouldn't the South have taken over the country and that would have been the end of democracy? No, the South only wanted to divorce itself from the North, not conquer it. They wanted to do the same thing that the founders did to their own British government. And democracy would have continued to thrive in the two nations. Besides, if the South had been allowed to leave in peace, commercial relationships with the South would have continued and expanded. After a number of years, the same reasons that led colonists to form a union in the first place would likely have become more appealing to both sections, and the union would probably have remained. Why haven't most Americans understood me like you have? Because they get dumbed down in government schools. The government schools have the pro-government bias. To see for yourself just look at the ways that different governments explain the same event in their government approved textbooks. Victor's right, the official history. Oh, it starts with sweatshop labor in a foreign factory and gets packed on a vessel and shipped over the sea. It's loaded onto trailers and it's spread across the map. Big Box Mart is the place I go to buy all of my crap. Oh, Big Box Mart, what do you have for me? Cause our shopping carts are empty and we're on a shopping spree. I come to the Big Box Mart cause I do have lots of needs. And they sell crap the cheapest with their discounts guaranteed. When I'm walking through the aisles, it's like I'm hypnotized. With a wallet full of credit cards, I never leave deprived. Oh, Big Box Mart, thank you for serving me. But my house is full of crap now, and it used to be empty. The next day at the factory, the news was very grim. My job was being outsourced to the slums of East Beijing. Management was streamlining the company's org chart. We gotta make crap cheap enough to sell to Big Box Mart. Oh, Big Box Mart, look what you've done to me. He's gotta start all over at the age of 53. 
still go to Big Box Mart, yes, I'm there most all the time. These days you'll likely find me sweeping aisle number nine. My dreams of a retirement have gone up in a blaze, and I'll be scrubbing toilets till they stick me in the grave. Oh, Big Box Mart, what have you sold to me? We used to be your customers, now we're your employees. Oh, Big Box Mart, my paycheck reminds me, your everyday low prices have a price. They are and free. Paper or plastic?